Hi, everyone. I'm Alex Savage from KTVU Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And of course, during this pandemic, it is an extremely challenging time, especially for older Americans who are being forced to remain inside their homes, obviously, for their own health and, and safety. And there's one organization here in the Bay Area that is reaching out to try to help those seniors uh, during this very difficult time. We're joined now by Carrie Rojensky, who is the director of something called The Hummingbird project. Carrie, it's so great to have you on here. Uh, for, first of all, explain uh, the, the work that your organization does and, and how you have now transitioned to doing virtual therapy sessions uh, for, for older adults in the community. How does this work? Well, thank you, Alex, um, for inviting me to share our story. Um, the Hummingbird Project, um, prior to COVID-19, uh, was an in-home therapeutic activity program serving older adults in the Greater Bay Area, in Sacramento, in uh, the LA area, and also in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And the premise of our program is that we work one-on-one -on -one, um, with older adults and adults with disabilities to create a unique and individualized activity program for every single person's needs. So uh, our program's different than um, a senior center, a day program, or a group program in an assisted living or memory care community where a group of people gather together. What makes us different and uh, unique is that I'm gonna work with each of my clients one-on-one -on -one to create activities that are gonna enhance their quality of life um, and bring joy into their day-to-day -day experience, but based on their needs, which means I can customize the program, what I'm offering and the materials I'm using to their cognitive and physical needs. Um, so we're really comfortable and enjoy um, working with people with dementia. Um, and the premise of our program is supporting the holistic quality of life of each individual. Um, um, so we work with seven domains of wellness and then uh, deliver those activities to, to the individuals that we serve. Um, so as you can imagine, um, with shelter in place, uh, the way in which we delivered our program needed to shift um, because protecting our seniors is, is of the utmost importance. Um, but uh, we refuse um, to let isolation and loneliness win this COVID-19 fight. Um, we're committed to finding unique and alternative ways, no matter what, um, to support each individual's uh, well-being. And so our program is now fully virtual. Um, we're also offering remote connections. So uh, for folks that might be um, a little timid or need some support setting up a virtual connection, we're able to meet with folks by phone um, and then also through the mail, um, which receiving mail right now, I know for a lot of people brings a sense of joy and connection. Yeah. Um, and the program's also now national. So um, okay. overnight, we were able to shift from just serving these small um, counties um, to serving people all across the nation, which is wow. really lovely. That that of course of course right now because of you know the virtual nature of these sessions now now you can uh, you can talk to anyone anywhere in the country. So give give me an example of what one of these sessions is going to to look like here. It can involve a, a number of of different things. There, there's there's music. There's um, there there's uh, physical activities that are happening. What is what is what is a, an average session look like? I know they're tailored to uh, to each individual, but what what would a session maybe look like? So I'm actually gonna tell you the story of two of my clients I'm working with right now virtually. Um, so one gentleman, um, I was writing a legacy project with, and you can actually see a video um, on our website of what our sessions looked like prior to COVID-19. And what that meant is we were meeting in person and we've created this really amazing book about his life that we're gonna have printed for his his family and his colleagues. Um, and. Uh, Prior to COVID-19, we would meet for two hour sessions once a week and we were reviewing and editing his book. Uh, we've been able to very easily transition that to connecting over Zoom. So he and I meet every week via Zoom. Um, his wife sets him up on the family iPad and there I am on the screen. Um, we start by just connecting and checking in and then I do a screen share of the PDF of his book and we're able to edit, look at photos, 
uh, reminisce. He's telling me all the stories of all of the photos. We're doing some fact checking uh, based on what we already have written in the book. Um, and just having an opportunity to really reflect on his robust and amazing life. Um, and we've been able to do that with the um, exact same amount of joy um, and connection that we were able to do um, when we were meeting in person. That, that's uh, tremendous. It, it, the, obviously, uh, you know, you, what you're trying to do is to, to keep, keep uh, older adults, you know, with that person to person contact during a time when it really they're isolated at home. And I, I, I mean, how, how concerned are you about um, seniors who are, are home and, and maybe even by themselves at a time like this, that, that, that isolation um, it, 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 and, and the boredom, I mean, it, it, you know, it just sort of seems like it's, um, it, it, it's not good for, for their mental well-being. Yeah, so that's a great question, Alex. I mean, something I've been very committed to in my career as a licensed marriage and family therapist and a drama therapist has been to educating people about the negative impacts of isolation and loneliness. Um, and I've been, you know, presenting at this uh, about this topic at, at conferences and to other um, folks for years. And I think right now we're all having the lived experience of what isolation can feel like. Um, actually, one of my my clients who I'm now doing um, armchair travel sessions with um, via Zoom said to me the other day. She said, "Carrie, isolation's not new to me. It's new to all of you." Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm very concerned about the impact um, of, of the current situation we're in. Um, and that's why I think it's so important that be, we be warriors of joy and we find ways to still get into people's homes, to, to connect with them and to not let the isolation win. Um, you know, we know statistically about the negative impact of isolation and loneliness on older adults well before COVID-19. And so I feel like more, more than ever, we have to find ways to remain engaged no matter what. Um, I, I mentioned armchair travel, Alex. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's an amazing way to connect. So we have this um, beloved curriculum that we've created, many of us sharing stories of places we've traveled to. Um, and what we're able to do, especially for connecting with someone via Zoom, is we can do a screen share of a PowerPoint presentation that includes pictures and information and anecdotes and intellectual engagement about the places we've traveled to. This is something that so many of our clients um, really enjoy about virtual sessions. Um, mm -hmm. And you can literally transport yourself to these places and it feels so fulfilling. And for many of the clients we're working with, they, they likely weren't traveling before COVID-19 mm -hmm. anyways. So this is just another way to allow them to have that, that meaningful um, person-centered um, experience that, that matters um, so much. How, how has the transition online during the outbreak been for, for your clients? Have, have there been, uh, you know, there, well, I know there have been, I'm sure, because there have been for all of us, technological hurdles to try to overcome. And, and have you found that your clients are, are able to, to, you know, figure those things out with, with help from maybe people around them to, to be able to, to do those Zoom calls, to do the virtual sessions? Great question, and and the answer is yes. And I, like you, was surprised at how easy it has been. Um, at first, when we were switching kind of overnight to the virtual program, I too had concerns about well, what is this going to look like, and what platforms are we going to use, and how are we going to help people, especially if they're local, um, get uh, technology into their homes if they don't have it. But it's really amazing, um, and I think we are all having this lived experience, um, to see how we can embrace change and creativity at the drop of a hat if we need to. Um, and so many of our clients have found ways to connect. So we've been using Zoom as, as a primary platform, also FaceTiming with a lot of clients. So even if the client didn't have um, technology in their home, uh, many either have a family member whom they're living with or a care provider in the home who's there to provide essential services who um, will be willing to allow us to use their phone or iPad to connect. We also are available to set up um, an iPad or a device for mm -hmm. individuals. So the way we've been handling that, um, Alex, to keep our clients safe is we receive the iPad to our office, we set it up, we then of course disinfect it uh, appropriately before yeah. delivering it to the client's home where someone there receives it and then we help them get set up. Um, I, I 
also have been amazed by, um, uh, you know, the, my last two sessions uh, this week with my clients. Both of them were instantly on Zoom without a problem. Yeah. Um, I was able to talk them through by phone if there was a trick that they were experiencing, um, but I have had uh, no problem helping clients get set up. Um, and again, I think it's because people know they need connection and they're just crave. people are bored and they're lonely and they're craving anything that can yeah. help um, them, them stay engaged. And so because of that, we're finding ways um, to make it happen. I, I think that um, I, right now it, it feels to me like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of folks who are really really worried about their their parents who are who may be older who may be seniors, um, and, and I'm wondering what what you would say are the best strategies to try to remain connected um, and, and and you know and keep engaged with with them uh, at a time like this when they're being told to stay at home, especially if we're, if you know if you're talking about your parents or or relatives. Um, who don't live close by, uh, who live on the other side of the country. What, what are some strategies to, to try to keep engaged with them? So my number one, um, my number one uh, offer to, to everyone is don't be afraid to try. So something that I have experienced, um, and I experienced this myself, I am originally from uh, Canada, and my grandmother is living in memory care back at home. And I was, just went through this journey with my, my father who was trying to connect with his mom and was really struggling. Um, and when, when I say don't be afraid to try, what I mean is, is, is do whatever it takes to find a way to help be connected. Mm -hmm. So in this example with my family, um, what that meant was uh, keep, we had to keep calling the community that she lived in and keep asking um, to speak with her um, and not be, I mean, a lot of these communities right now are taxed and need our love and support as they're trying to keep our older adults safe. And they are also working night and day to keep folks connected and engaged. So keep calling, keep offering support. Um, in, in the example of my family, we were able to connect with my grandmother via FaceTime. We were able to, to have a, a caregiver on the inside use an iPad and, and allowed my dad and my family to connect um, with my grandmother when they hadn't been able to see her in that way for several weeks. Um, so I think um, you know, really being an advocate and helping people uh, talk through the anxiety or concerns they have about using technology or the phone is really important. Um, people um, are concerned about what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like. And I think the more confident that we can be on the outside to, um, to hold our loved one's hands and help them find a way is essential um, to making sure that older adults feel connected. Um, I also just want to make sure folks know um, you can drop things off, make sure, of course, that they're wiped down first. Yeah. Um, you can send items through the mail um, to allow folks to be connected. You can send um, photos and you can send images um, to update um, your loved ones on how you're doing. I can't tell you how many people we've got on Zoom calls lately because they want to be connected um, and join things like a happy hour or an armchair travel session. Mm -hmm. And I offer this um, as a professional and also in my own family. Um, you know, just yesterday, I was able to connect with some of my family members who are in their 80s who, who swore they would never jump on a Zoom call but did. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, we, you know, we made it happen. That's and great. part of it was just like yeah. not being afraid, right? Um, just embracing uh, the improvisational and spontaneous nature of the situation we're in, um, and and believing that connection matters more. It seems like this is going to going to th this outbreak um, is going to change your approach in in some way. I mean, obviously, there's going to come a time when it's it's safe to go continue visiting uh, with clients in their homes. But but you just you just referenced the fact that now you're able to to um, connect with people and do these virtual sessions with people all across the country when before you were limited to sort of the West Coast. So it, how how much do you think when it's all said and done, this changes your approach to to being able to to reach as many people as possible? You know, I I think um, it's helped us grow. So just like all of you, um, when Shelter in Place came upon us and, and the, the, the fear and anxiety of, of COVID-19 became very real, 
um, there was, I, I felt like I had a choice to make personally and professionally. I, I could either, um, you know, lean into this opportunity to be creative and to use my skills to grow the capacity of the program, or um, I could lean into the fears that I was holding around what the future was going to look like. And so, you know, at the Hummingbird Project, what we believe in is uh, that joy um, matters first. Um, you know, we have this amazing product called our Joyful Moments Activity mm -hmm. Card. And it, it's all about making sure that joy comes first for the clients we serve. And so um, I think that COVID-19 has allowed us to grow our program. It's allowed us to expand in really unique and creative ways. Um, and as you mentioned, the second we can get back to seeing our clients in person um, here locally, we can't wait for that moment to come. Yeah. Um, but the fact that now we can serve people nationally and that we can really educate um, other elder care companies um, and professionals around holistic quality of life and leaning into technology and finding, you know, unique and new ways, um, then the, the larger impact we can have. And, and that matters to us um, because I, I, I think that sometimes uh, we're so overwhelmed in elder care, um, trying to keep people safe, that sometimes the, the importance of joy and connection and engagement is secondary. And um, I think virtual connection is a way to put those on the same playing field um, so that we're always approaching quality of care and quality of life um, in a unique way, which is yeah. you know what our parent company at Sage Elder Care Solutions um, stands for. Yeah, a holistic approach uh, right. to care. Well, uh, finally, as we wrap up here, if, if people you know have heard what you, what these sessions are all about and they're interested, what what is uh, what are these sessions cost? If if someone is interested yeah. in in, um, yeah. in having a loved one take part or themselves take part. So I want to offer everyone um, is welcome to call us for a complimentary consultation anytime and we are 100% here to help. Um, should folks decide to move forward with virtual sessions, our sessions are $95 for a one hour session. And we're also offering a 30 minute session for $50. Um, and what's great is that the 30 minute session can really um, help benefit folks um, who might be having a behavioral expression of a need or as other folks refer to as behaviors. Um, we really want to make sure that we're a resource for family members who might be feeling really tired and exhausted in their role as caregivers, also for professional caregivers. And so you can initiate our services for those 30-minute sessions. And our, my favorite 30-minute session is our, um, our music sessions. I mean, yeah, having, a violinist, having a violinist join you for 30 minutes in your home yeah. for a personal concert is I want amazing. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, Alex, I just want to mention, so yeah. there's our one hour, our 30 minute, um, but we also, um, at the Hummingbird Project several years ago, published our Joyful Moments Therapeutic Activity yeah. Cards. Um, and I want to mention those as a resource. Uh, they're available on our website for $24.95. Um, so you can go online and order them today. Um, and what's so great about the activity cards is they're, they're kind of like a, a, a recipe card, if you will. So um, activity on the front, exactly how to do it on the back there you go oh god and these were created specifically Great. for family and professional caregivers as a tool to help you connect um, and the majority of these cards can very easily be done by phone um, or virtually um, so i want to offer that as a resource to people um, and hope Perfect. that family caregivers in in particular will reach out for these as a as a, a tool for support um, during this challenging time yeah. Well, good. That sounds like a, a wonderful tool that I think can make a, a tremendous difference for, for a lot of families. Um, I, I think, you know, it, it sounds like great work you guys are doing. And um, I'm glad that we were uh, able to have you on here to, to uh, tell everyone how this all works. And, and it's just, you know, as I don't have to tell you, just so important to um, reach out to and stay connected with uh, older adults right now and, and our older relatives and parents and everything. Cause uh, it, it's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous time for, for them yeah. being, being on their own right now. Well, thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. I consider myself pretty lucky to have um, what I consider the best job in the world mm -hmm. and connecting virtually um, has just made that even more rich. So thank you. Um, 
uh, for um, acknowledging and sharing this important information and this topic with with others like you. I think it's yeah. it, it should be our number one priority in the nation right now is how do we support older adults during this really challenging time? Yeah, yeah, it is a, such an important issue. I appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Carrie Rojensky, you are uh, the director of the Hummingbird Project uh, based uh, here in the Bay Area, but uh, as we talked about, serving clients uh, virtually all across the country uh, during, during this uh, coronavirus outbreak. So uh, keep up the good work. It's really nice to have you on. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, you uh, watching here can find more information on our website, coronavirusnow.com. I'm Alex Savage from KTVU, Fox 2 in the Bay Area.